All right, so I find myself um, re-explaining a lot what I'm looking for on the veins on the bottom of the tongue in Chinese medicine. Now, I didn't learn this within my program, but I've seen it clinically in observation and can really verify it well. The, um, when they look at the tongue, they're looking for different health factors, and you can evaluate yourself really easy, like, easily like this. What you do is first, we're not going to look under the tongue yet, which is awesome, but on top, my tongue, you're going to see the general shape, color, uh, texture, and um, the coating, right? It's slightly pale. I'm close to my menstrual cycle, so it's going to be a little bit lower because the blood's going towards clearing the uh, uterus, uterine lining. The um, I have a little bit of tooth marks. Indentations on what's the border of the... Uh, spleen, well, it's, they say it's a spleen chi problem, but it functionally, what that means is that the lymphatic system, the immune system is not as good as it could be. It's a lot better than it used to be years ago for me, but it's a little bit low today and I have a little bit of adrenal insufficiency, which you can hear in my inhale on my breath. This is very, very useful if you're trying to diagnose what your hormonal levels are, but super simple. I'll throw this in as an extra. The, when you do an inhalation and you hear a raspiness, which is the precursor to the adrenaline, adrenaline being low, just like an asthma, you'll hear this. You hear the difference in my inhale and exhale? My inhale is raspy, kind of strained. And my exhale is very clear. Adrenal insufficiency sounds like that. People who have any allergies or asthma, like I said, will have it. The um, exhale sounds actually very clear. I hear a kind of like a very difficult, slow, withholding exhale on people who have um, uh, their diaphragm is locked and they're not breathing all the way into their lower, their lower uh, lobes of their lungs. So you really have to do that belly breathing, that yogic breathing, Buddha breathing, breathing deep into your belly, expanding it out like a baby. No, you know, no holding of the abdominal wall. Anyway, that's all on a side. Let's look at the tongue again. But this is just good diagnostics for you to know. Anyway, the I was going to show you what's really useful to you. I kind of look at the veins under the tongue as like a gas tank. Um, and the two veins, of course, each corresponding and running up. You know, you're looking at the carotid primarily. There's so many damn circulatory systems, so things going on right there. Anyway, <clears throat> if your cervical vertebra are out, if the muscles are too tight, if uh, if you so if you have a, a structural problem versus a fluid supply problem, I mean the quality of the blood and the way that it circulates, then the structural problem will be very evident in breaks, sudden breaks between the two different veins, there'll be just a cut off immediately where the problem is in your body. So the tip of the tongue is the upper body, heart and lung area, spleen stomach here, liver gallbladder on the sides, and spleen stomach goes through the center as well. And the root all the way at the back is the kidney or the hormonal system. But when, so knowing that this is upper body, to lower body at the back. And when you look at where you may have a mechanical problem, you look at the veins under the tongue. These two, if you have a sudden break, uh -huh, I don't have one, but if you have a sudden break, then you're going to have a, a vertebra, a cervical vertebra, or what I see is not cervical. I'm sorry if it were closer to the tip, somewhere between the cervical up through the T. 10 area, usually the thoracic 10 area. So along your rib cage is going to be out and you should just get a chiropractic adjustment. The, uh, or get a massage if you're afraid of the chiropractor. I love chiropractic, so I can't argue. Anyway, so you look for that if you're having a mechanical problem. Um, I, if you're having anything like uh, chronic migraines and you see that break, you need to go get an adjustment because you may not have a chemical migraine or a hormonal migraine. Anyway, the other things I want you to look at, mostly for the fluid levels, for you to gauge the quality of your blood, is how how uh, long the veins are from root to tip underneath and how wide they are. So if your circulation is poor, the veins will not go from root to tip. And, and it doesn't matter how much, how good your blood quality is, whether you're anemic or whether you just have low blood volume or whatever. If the circulation is poor, 
then it won't go from root to tip. If the circulation is good with low blood volume or anemia, any of these symptoms, they will be thin and still go from root to tip like this. All the way there. And I'm not biting. If you put your teeth against it, you're going to put pressure and of course it's going to cause it to flood more. So, and the width should generally be, generally be about a centimeter or so. Uh, if your gas tank is full, so if your blood system is really healthy, good quality stuff, and you've really been keeping it yourself well fed with nice foods, it'll be about that thick and it'll be nice and dark and it won't be subdued. So mine have a good quality right now. It's a little bit low from where it should be. It is late in the day for me. I usually peak at a good blood. Um, the blood under my veins looks the best for me around 11 o'clock in the morning. This is almost 12 hours later. That's a good width. Anyway, the only other thing that you might look for when you're looking at the veins under your tongue, well, not the only other thing, but one of the other things you'll see is if your fluid level is too high, you're main, retaining too many fluids and you're, say your thyroid function isn't that great, then you're going to see that your veins are actually subdued behind like a wall, those two primary veins, of fluid. It looks kind of foggy like a cataract. Then you're going to want to either add some salts or good quality, quality pink Himalayan salts or something like that or anything else. Anyway, evaluate your diet. Look at your electrolytes. Get rid of excess inflammatory foods. The <laughs> There's so many ways depending on the person. Anyway, <clears throat> the last thing, the last thing to look at would be the breaks and inflammation. If you have a lot of side veins going off that are bright red and inflamed, then you've got circulatory inflammation. You've got to make a change to your diet. You're probably smoking or eating horrible foods that are really inflammatory. So cut those out because you're building some serious cardiac disease. You do have very likely have some beginning of a cardiac disease or some problem or some type of thrombic problem, right? If you have dark purple spots, they look like clots. It doesn't have to be the case, but you may want to get an evaluation if you're suspecting you have a cardiac risk. If you have purple spots alongside those veins, especially in the heart area of the tongue, up in this area, not on the two primary veins. They can be there, but they obstruct the ones going and branching off the thinner ones. Okay. Well, that was just a little mishmash of weird diagnostic information. And if you have questions, let me know.